I would like you to first imagine that you are floating in space and you can see the Earth orbiting the Sun. Now because of how the Earth orbits the Sun, sometimes the Earth is closer and sometimes the Earth is farther away. But I would like you to just imagine the average distance between the Earth and the Sun in space. I would then like you to imagine a giant space whale in the spot between the Sun and the Earth. So the giant whale is the average distance between the two. I would also like you to imagine that the giant whale has a top hat and that the whale's name is Austin Underhill. I now would like you to visualize the Sun and Saturn and imagine that a row of space whales has nestled itself between the two. How many space whales, given they were in a line, could you fit between the Sun and Saturn? I'd just like you to guess, pause if you need to, and I'll go on in a moment. Keeping in mind that we're talking about the average distance between the Sun and Saturn, the answer is about 9.5 space whales that will fit between the Sun and Saturn. Here's a table that has some more stellar objects. Neptune is around 30. When we get to the heliopause, which is as far as the influence of the sun can reach, that's about 100. Alpha Centauri, our nearest star neighbor, is 277,600 space whales away. A Cygnus X1, which is our, the closest black hole, is 380 million. And if we take the edge of the observable universe, that's three quadrillion space whales away, or Austin Underhills from the sun. Now what I'd like to do is take the items from our table and graph them on a line. By that what I mean is on the far left we have the Sun, on the far right we have the edge of the universe at three quadrillion space whales, and somewhere on the line we place all the rest of the items so that the distances match the distances on the line. I'd like you to think though a little bit, there is actually a problem with doing that. Pause if you need some time to think about it. What would happen if you placed the Earth, Alpha Centauri, and all the rest onto that line? Unfortunately, all of them would fall on the far left. So they would look like this black hole is in the same place as the Earth. That wouldn't really help us too much in getting a perspective on the distances apart. And this would happen pretty much no matter what if we put the edge of the universe on our chart. The simple truth is three quadrillion is a very large number compared with any of the others and we're going to have to come up with a different system if we're going to use it. Here's a different way to arrange the line so that you might be able to fit everything in such a way that it makes sense. Instead of numbering linearly, let's have each step on our line be multiplying by 10. So the first position means one space whale. The second position means 10 space whales. So that's one times 10. The third position means three space whales. That's 10 times 10 and so on. So each step you're multiplying by 10 or in this case, just adding a zero. Now, it does get a bit messy, so what I'm going to do as shorthand, for writing 10 times 10, I'm going to write 10 squared. For 10 times 10 times 10, I'll write 10 cubed, and so on. By doing that, we actually get a nice layout of the different spots on the line. Arranging the line this way gives us a much better idea of what's going on. It's not perfect. Saturn and Neptune are sort of crammed in on the picture. But other than that, this is a much better way of looking at things. This is what's known as the logarithmic scale, and it gets used quite a bit in both finance and in science. I'd like you to note that on the logarithmic scale, there are really two labels for each of these points. There's 
the number, so 10 to the 1 is 10, 10 squared is 100, 10 cubed is 1,000, but also the exponent, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And each one is essentially telling us the place on the line. So the one exponent is the first position, the two exponent is the second position, and the three exponent is the third position. So that the third position also contains the number 1,000. Moving from 10 to the first, or 10, to 10 to the second, or 100, involves multiplying the number by 10, but adding to the exponent, or the position on the line, by 1. Also, looking at logarithms, the log base 10 of 10 is 1, since 10 to the 1 power is 10. The log base 10 of 100 is 2, since 10 squared is 100. And the log base 10 of 1,000 is 3, since 10 to the 3rd is 1,000, and so on. So essentially, the logarithm base 10 of the number gives us the exponent, or the position, on the scale. Putting these facts together, if we add the logarithm, so add the positions that these numbers are at, so for example, 2 plus 3 equals 5, we would be the equivalent of the log base 10 of 10 squared plus the log base 10 of 10 cubed equals the log base 10 of 10 to the fifth, then we are actually multiplying the numbers that we're taking the logarithms of. So 10 squared times 10 cubed is 10 to the fifth power, or essentially 10 times 10, another 10 times 10 times 10, all puts together to have five tens being multiplied together. Here's another example. 3 plus 5 equals 8. Or the third position plus the fifth position equals the eighth position. In logarithms, the logarithm of 10 cubed plus the logarithm of 10 to the fifth equal the logarithm of 10 to the eighth. And notice that the number taking the logarithms of 10 cubed and 10 to the fifth power multiply by 10 to the eighth power. So to recap, adding the positions of the numbers is the same thing as multiplying those numbers together. So that the third position plus the fifth position is the eighth position, 10 cubed times 10 to the fifth power is 10 to the eighth power. Since the positions on the logarithmic scale correspond to taking the logarithms of those numbers, the logarithms added together of two numbers is the same thing as taking the logarithms of the two numbers multiplied. So A could be 10 cubed, B could be 10 to the fifth power, and then A times B would be 10 to the eighth power. Two more things to note. The logarithm doesn't have to be base 10. The logarithm in this example is base 2, and really any base will work as long as it's the same base that you're adding the logarithms of. And the same rule applies where the numbers you're actually taking the logarithms of will multiply. Also, there is an actual astronomical term for the average distance between the Earth and the Sun, and that happens to be an astronomical unit. If you're confident about what's going on now, try to use the logarithmic scale to justify what happens when you take two logarithms and subtract them.